let us all begin by renewing our shahadat, which is the foundation for our whole existence. Saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alaihi wasallam. With this foundation, we may build something. With this foundation, there can be unity, because this shahadat is calling for unity. This shahadat is calling for one Allah. This shahadat is calling for one Creator. This shahadat is calling for one Prophet that is the seal of all the Prophets. The one Prophet that all the other Prophets they make the shahadat with his name. This is one of the gifts of this nation that we are saying the shahadat of the prophets. All earlier prophets, 124,000 of them, they have to witness to the risalat of Muhammad Rasulullah For that, how much more endless thanks we have to give to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us to be in the ummat of his Habibullah but to give the shahadat of the prophets. We are thankful for that. We are thankful to our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has created us human and he has created us in Ahsani Taqwi, in the most perfect form. We are thanking our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in this Ahir Zaman, He has made us to hold on tightly to one of His most beloved friends, our Shaykh Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibrisiya Rabbani, to make our Shahada to become alive. For us to bear witness to Allah, for us to bear witness to the Prophet How are we going to do that? Do we think that bearing witness to Allah and His Prophet is just to say, I bear witness to Allah? It's just to say, I bear witness to the Prophet Don't make no mistake, none of us have witnessed Allah. And none of us have witnessed the Prophet ﷺ. So what does it mean now? In this Ahir Zaman, in this top of the mountains in the Catskills, for us to renew our Shahadat and for us to make our Shahadat to become alive. Because the Shahadat can get old. Yes, the Shahadat can get dirty. The shahadat of a munafiq is not the same as the shahadat of a mu'min. The shahadat of a mu'min is not the same as the shahadat of a prophet. So there are different shahadats. Which shahadat are we holding on to? Which shahadat are we trying to make to become alive? Don't jump to say our shahadat is so alive, we're witnessing Allah. There are some foolish ones. They're going around saying, don't have um, too much concentration talking about the ego. Just say Allah. Just say Allah. Why do you have to say about the ego? Why do you have to feel sorry about the ego and talk about the ego and have so much effort and talk about the ego? Just say Allah. Bre, a munafiq can say Allah. A kafir can say Allah. You train the bird to say Allah, you can say Allah. You put the recorder to say Allah continuously as long as his electricity is going to say Allah. But what kind of Allah? Two billion Muslims now, they're saying Allah. But two billion Muslims cannot even come together to say Allah. So what's the matter now? What happened? Yeah. Because everyone is making an ilah for themselves. Everyone 
is looking at Allah according to their own invention. Everyone is following Allah according to their ego. If you're not following Allah according to the Prophet والسلام, and to his inheritors, the waris of the Nabi, then you're just following Allah according to your own invention. That is a hidden, uh, we don't like to use the word shirk, but it is a hidden big mistake. Because if we are not understanding what we are saying, la, to, we cannot say Allah. Our shahadat is saying, la ilaha illallah. It is not saying Allah, la ilaha. It is saying la ilaha, no ilah, no gods except for Allah. Are we understanding what the ilah is? If we think the ilah is just building a statue, that was finished 1400 years ago. All the statues around the Kaaba, they were all knocked down. There is no more ilahs. The physical ilah. So now, if you are not understanding what is the hidden ilah that is not physical, that the Prophet ﷺ is saying there is a hidden shirk and it is very difficult to detect. If you are not Understanding what those ilahs are and how to get rid of it, then what is our kalima shahadat? How are we going to say la ilaha illallah? If they are Allah, they are saying four enemies to the mankind nafs, shaitan. Hawa and dunya. The nafs, the nafis, is even more dangerous than shaitan. Because shaitan is not making a shirk. Shaitan is saying, La ilaha illallah. But our nafs is making a shirk 24 hours. When you don't remember Allah. Who are you remembering? Yourself. The nafis, the nafs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring to his divine presence and asking, who are you and who am I? Who am I and who are you? And our nafs saying, you are you and I am me. The nafs is saying, you are you and I am me. The nafs is already saying, you and me were equal. The nafs is declaring itself a partner to Allah. No animal is making a shirk to Allah. Every animal knows its creator. No angel, no creature is making any mistake about its creator. Only mankind. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in Ahsani Taqwim to represent him. But there is in this, in man, that is pulling him to the wrong side. That is opening the doors to shaitan to enter. And that is the ego. If you don't understand this ego, you cannot say Allah. You don't understand the hundreds of the thousands of the tricks and traps of your ego, you cannot say Allah. You can say by word. You can even hold a tasbih and make thousands of times saying Allah but when you forget about your ego your ego never forgets you that time your ego will declare itself as a challenge to Allah this is our nafs so the man who doesn't understand his nafs he doesn't understand himself and the Holy Prophet is saying, the one who doesn't understand, the one who knows himself, he knows his Lord.
So all knowledge, all understanding now, it comes back to you, to yourself, how much you are knowing yourself. Only that time you will know Allah. If you don't know yourself, but you know the Quran, your knowledge is still zero. It's very dangerous. Because you don't know when your nafs is pulling you. You know all four books. You don't know yourself. Your knowledge is still zero. You know knowledge of the heavens. And you know knowledge of the earths. But you don't know yourself. You don't know what is your anger. And you don't know the thousands of the tricks and traps of your anger. You don't know your stubbornness. So many denying they are stubborn. That itself is stubbornness. You're not understanding your arrogance. You're not understanding jealousy that you have. All these four qualities, how much Allah you're making, that much is going to cancel and burn. It's going to finish. Two billion Muslims, everyone claiming to know Allah. Everyone praying so much, everyone learning so much, everyone is running top speed to become a scholar in Islam. But we're looking at the condition of the Muslims. Not only dunya wise, it is worse, but spiritually there is no blessing coming down. Why is that? Because for the last hundred years, the influence of Wahhabism. It enters into the Muslim nation, into this ummah, making this ummah to run after nationalism, to run after zahiri knowledge, and to forget the remembrance of Allah, and to cut us off from holy people. Because you cannot know yourself by yourself. It is impossible. <coughs> You cannot know yourself by yourself. <coughs> you cannot even know how you look like physically if you don't have something that reflects how you are. If you don't have a mirror, your eye that can see this whole world, that can see this whole creation, cannot even see itself. You need a mirror. That mirror is the inheritor of the prophets. That mirror is the shaykh. He's going to show you yourself. Maybe you're not going to like it. If that shaykh is good, definitely you're not going to like it. He's going to bring out all the hidden things that you have inside, all the hidden sicknesses, and he's going to make you to understand it. And now, either you're going to get rid of it now, clean yourself before you go or they're going to clean you in the grave. <coughs> We're asking Allah to bless our Shaykh because he has brought us out from that mess in this Ahir Zaman, in this center of the world <coughs> to make us, to wake us up and to make us to understand ourselves, to understand our Lord because this is the reason of creation. This is the reason of creation. Our reason of creation, it is not to go to school, to go to work, to get married, to have children, to collect. This is not the reason of our creation. The reason of our creation. For those who think creation is just in this world, then you are no better, we are no better than the animals. But if you believe that our creation was before this world and it's going to continue after this world, that we are a hidden treasure of Allah, then that time you understand what I'm talking about. May Allah forgive me Amen. and bless you. Amen. May the sincere ones come, inshallah. May those who are not sincere to wake up. May this Ummah wake up before it is too late. It is already a little bit too late. All the signs are showing. 
but still people are sleeping and looking at this world like our Shah is saying it is so shiny and you have no understanding of your religion you have no understanding of the spirituality this world is very short the signs of the last days have already come we are here not looking forward to new days we are here just being patient until Sahibu Zaman appears we work we go to school we got married we have children but our aim is not this world May Allah keep our hearts to be strong, inshallah, in this way. Wa bin Allahu tafiq al-Fatiha.